Greetings on this third Sunday in Epiphany from the Sanctuary of St. Matthew's Church in Glendale, California. Wherever you might be, we are so very happy to have you with us today for our virtual worship service. Let us pray. Merciful God, so often we have taken for granted the salvation you have provided for us through your loving grace. Too often we have seen it only as a gift meant to be received and treasured, but not to be passed on as a blessing to others. Forgive us and enliven our spirits once again, that our joy might shine forth and be a blessing to the lost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Isaiah, the one God who sits above the earth and numbers the stars also strengthens the powerless. So in Jesus' healing work, we see the hand of the Creator God lifting up the sick woman to health and service. Like Simon's mother-in-law, we are lifted up and healed to serve. Following Jesus, we strengthen the powerless. Like Jesus, we seek to renew our own strength in quiet times of prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of God's love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from God both mercy and forgiveness. O oh God, you open your reign to the poor in spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You satisfy those who hunger for righteousness and justice. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You give joy and gladness to those who mourn. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for Jesus' sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of Jesus' church and by Jesus' authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now in union with Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near through the shedding of Jesus' blood, for Jesus is our peace. The peace of Jesus be with you always, and also with you. me 
Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The grace and mercy of our Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all and also with you. Wisdom rescued the holy and faultless nation of Israel from those who were oppressing them the righteous sing the glories of God's name. She did this by entering the soul of your servant Moses and opposing cruel kings with her amazing miracles. The righteous shall sing the glories of God's name. Wisdom rewarded those people for their hardships and guided them in a wonderful way, providing shade for them during the day and starlight at night. The righteous shall sing the glories of God's name. She brought them safely through the Red Sea, but she drowned their enemies and washed their bodies up on the shore. The righteous shall sing the glories of God's name. So your obedient people took possessions of those ungodly people. Then they sang praises to your holy name and praised you for protecting them because wisdom healed those who could not talk and helped infants to speak clearly. The righteous shall sing the glories of God's name. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Your mercy, O oh Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Judgments are great things.
now about the gifts of the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. Two days later, there was a wedding in the town of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. <laughs> when the wine had given out, Jesus' mother said to him, They are out of wine. Madam, what do you have to do with this? My time has not yet come. Do whatever he tells you. The Jews have rules about ritual washing, and for this purpose six stone water jars were there, each one large enough to hold between 20 and 30 gallons. Fill these jars with water. They filled them to the brim. Now draw some water out and take it to the man in charge of the feast. This wine had come from, but of course the servants who had drawn out the water knew. So he called the bridegroom. Everyone else serves the best wine first, and after the guests have drunk a lot, he serves the ordinary wine. But you have kept the best wine until now.
Jesus performed this first miracle in Cana in Galilee. There he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, Jesus and his mother, brothers and disciples, went to Capernaum and stayed there a few days. Well, this morning I'd like to read to you from the Gospel of John in the second chapter. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to this wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to his mother, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. Now his mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. Jesus said, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they did. And when the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Well, grace and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a wedding, and there was a young boy who had never attended a wedding, and it was the first time, you know, that he had seen, like, a bride and a groom dressed up. He was fascinated by the bride who was all dressed in white. And he said to his mother, Mom, why is she all in white? Now his mother wasn't quite sure how to respond and to tell him, you know, something that a young boy could understand, and so she came up with this. She said, well, dear, the white is a sign of happiness and joy. Well, the boy seemed to be okay with that answer, and then you could see he had one more question and said, Mom, so why is the groom dressed in black? <laughs> weddings, weddings. They're a time of joy and celebration. You know, a time in which families and friends come together and, 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 and it seems to be that time where all are happy. And we know that wedding receptions, people even get a little more happier. Today we, we hear a story about Jesus. Jesus, and he performs his first sign or miracle. It happens at a wedding in Cana. We're not sure what the connection is. You know, why is Mary and Jesus there? You know, is it a relative? Um, is it somebody that they, you know, a close friend? All we know is that Mary was there, Jesus and his disciples were also invited. And so we hear and see the celebration. Now one of the things I need to share with you is that in the time of Jesus, weddings were big things, big things. I mean, their weddings would go for days, not just for three hours or so. 
days, and, and that the whole community would come together. The family and the community would all come together and they would celebrate. And what it was important, it seemed, is that all would have enough to eat and to drink. It's not much different than us today, right? You know, we have that reception and, and we're all concerned that everyone has enough to eat. And, well, the bar is open sometimes. Well, guess what happened? The wine ran out. My goodness. You know, in those days, that was not a good thing to have the wine run out. The omen that it created was that the wedding or this marriage would not stay together. That's why Mary was concerned. We've got to do something about this. And I often wonder in, in, this, in this story is, who put Mary in charge? You know, who, who said, Mary, you're responsible? Or, you know, why did she come and say to Jesus, you know, you need to do something? And Jesus just said, what concern is it of yours or mine? And all Mary said is to the servants, just do whatever he says. Well, this, this story is, is intriguing to me because I think, like I said earlier, it speaks about a couple things, at least close to me. One about the abundance of God's grace. The abundance of God's grace. Now Jesus said to those servants, go fill those jars, six of them, up to 30 gallons each, you know, with water. I don't know if you know how to make wine, I don't. But I think you need grapes, don't you? Okay. And, and, and so, you know, he said, fill it to th up to 30, you know, up to 30 gallons of water. And you have to also remember, what are these jars for? Do you remember what I said? Purification. Do you know what that was all about? It was about washing your hands. Okay? It, it was the Jewish rites that when you ever would enter into a place, you would wash up your hands. And, and that whole idea is so that your hands would be clean so that when you eat the food, it's not, you know, dirty. You know, hey, that's what we were told too, right? Wash your hands before every meal. Okay, so here's these jars that were being used for what? Washing hands. And Jesus uses those. Ooh. You know, you think about it. You know, Jesus didn't say, go dump the water out and then refill them. He just said, top them. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but when I think about this story, I think about, oh, man, would you want to drink out of your bath? You know, oh. but that's, let's not focus on that. <laughs> let's go back to the abundance of God's grace. Jesus gets all these six jars and fills them, has them filled, and then he says to the servants, now dip out of them, take it out to the chief steward. Well, I don't know about you, but if I was a servant, and my job was, you know, to, you know, bring wine to the chief steward, I'd be a little leery because I know what's in there. You know, and I'm taking this to the chief steward. I could lose my job, but they did it, so that's good. Um, but to their amazement, to the chief steward's amazement, this is the best wine that he's tasted. The best wine. Wow. Not only the best, do you, can you think about this? How many, how many bottles of wine that would make? <laughs> According to what I read, the calculations come to about a thousand bottles. Now this is a thousand bottles that Jesus bottled up, you know, for this end of this wedding ceremony of which they were already drunk. 
I think it's a little bit an abundant. Wouldn't you think so? He could have just said, you know, let's just do half of them. But it's, but it's what I think tells me about God's nature. God just doesn't do a little bit. God does an abundance of grace. God does an abundance of grace. God just doesn't give us a little, but God gives us a lot. And when we really think about it, you know, even though at times we feel like we don't have a lot, the thing is, is that we know that our Lord will always keep giving us more. There are so many stories in the Bible that talk about abundance, uh, abundance, things that I can think about. Remember when Jesus fed the 5,000 with what? Five loaves and two fish, and they had leftovers. 5,000 people ate off of that. That's pretty remarkable. And so I, I, I have to remind myself always that what these stories are talking about is the grace of God. You know, like Jesus said, what concern is it of me? You know, but Jesus said, I'll do it. That's what God's about. God can sit there and say, well, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve my love or my forgiveness or whatever it might be, or my caring or whatever it is. But that's not God's nature. God's nature is to say, I do care. And I care so much that my grace overflows. Oh, Psalm 23, right? My cup overflows. I shall not want. We know that abundance of God's grace. The other thing that's amazing is when I go back to this story is to think about those jars of, for purification and water. Okay? Get past the idea that they were washing, you know, that. I got thinking about that, about life. And about kind of my life. And sometimes I have thought that I am like that vessel. Jar. And sometimes I feel that, you know, what's in my vessel, what's in within me, isn't really very much. It's kind of ordinary, simple, plain old water, if we would want to say. I don't know if you've ever had that feeling, that, that sometimes your life isn't anything special, isn't anything ordinary. It's, it's just simply, eh, but what told, talk, talks to me in this, this uh, miracle is how Jesus could take that ordinary water, that ordinary water, and transform it into something great. Not just great, but the best. And I'm just wondering to myself, as I thought about my journey, why? Why would I ever be a pastor? I knew who I was, unworthy. Oh, I've done things that, that shouldn't be done or whatever it is. You know, why would Jesus pick me? I mean, I know I could name about four or five of you that would be better to be up here than me. But God chose me. And I have shared this with you. When, when I felt that calling... I said two things to God. One, if you really want me to be a pastor, you got some big changes to make. <laughs> Second thing is, if I screw up, it's your fault. <laughs> well, I don't think you can kind of bargain with God, but the thing that I do know is that God did change. God did change this person. God did make that ordinary Paul W. Gamlin. And I'm not saying he made me into the best, but he sure changed me into something better than I was. And that gives me hope. That gives me hope that God can change and transform life 
not just mine, but yours or anyone's, or even when I am feeling empty, God can put more into me and make life so much more, that's not even a good word, much more better. <laughs> can make life so much. That's not even better either. Life's good. Life is good. When we're at that lowest point in our life, when we wonder, can life even become good again? When we're sitting down in the dumps where I've been at times, can life become good? If we but believe in the Lord who can change water into wine, if we can believe the one who could raise Lazarus from the dead, if we can believe in the one who could feed 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, if we can believe in that person, we can believe that God can change us, transform us and our lives, and life can be better. Grace, again. Yes, these two these two things in this miracle have given me a lot of hope. And I would hope that it gives you hope. And it should give others hope. And I think we, like those servants, need to take our joy and what we know about our Lord to those whose vessels are seemingly depleted or empty, who need to be transformed, to need to hear the good news that God can make a difference. God will make a difference. Yes, we need to be those faithful servants, even though we question, but we know where all of miracles and grace come from. Our Lord and Savior. In the last part of that, all the disciples believed. All the disciples believed. The question is, do you? Do you believe in the Lord who turned water into wine? Do you believe in the God who is gracious? If so, then we can rejoice and we can come for I can tell you one thing, the wedding feast that is to come will be so much better than any wedding feast we've ever been at. And that's a promise.
as God's beloved people made radiant by the light of Jesus, let us pray for the church, the whole human family, and God's good creation. When your church grows weary and weak, give courage to our leaders, especially our bishops Elizabeth and Murray, and strengthen your people for service, that everyone who searches for you might share in the blessings of the gospel. Receive our prayer, O God, your mercy is great. Where the earth is exhausted by our demands, and the waters are polluted with our waste, bring rest to creation and restore the health of your creatures. Receive our prayer, O God, your mercy is great. When war and violence threaten innocent lives and displaced people flee for shelter, renew the strength of peacemakers and aid workers. Raise up leaders who value justice more than power. Receive our prayer, O God, your mercy is great. Where the brokenhearted and powerless cry out for relief, lift them to new hope. Comfort all who grieve losses of any kind, and sustain the suffering with your healing power, especially those suffering from COVID-19. Receive our prayer, O God, your mercy is great. When we are frantic and troubled, lead us into quiet places of prayer, that restored by your peace, we gladly serve you and our neighbors in our daily lives. Receive our prayer, O God, your mercy is great. Holy God, we lift our prayers to you in hope, and trusting all for whom we pray to your great goodness and mercy made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the universal creed of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God of love. May the death and resurrection of Jesus, which we have celebrated in this service, bring us with the faithful departed into the peace of your eternal home. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our rock and our salvation. Amen. May God give to you and to all those whom you love comfort and peace, light and joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.